Ah, geek out. Hey, and welcome to another Geek Out Commentary. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. We're continuing our celebration, whatever the fuck, of Jason Bourne, whatever we're doing. <laughs> Appreciation? It yeah. all starts as a celebration. It usually ends with going, why did we do this? <laughs> like every party, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My Kit Kats are all melty. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, let's celebrate that. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> give me a break. Uh, the uh, Yeah, we are... Continuing our little uh, Born marathon with the Born Supremacy, the second Born film, first one directed by Paul Greengrass, who would direct the sequel and the latest Born film. Um, you guys got anything to add before we jump in? Um, I feel like it, for most people, this is the weakest of the trilogy. Uh, well, I guess you know there's four, but yeah. the original trilogy. That most core, people say yeah. this is the weakest. Although I think it definitely has some interesting stuff going on, and, and one of my favorite little Jason Bourne isms slash moments. Yeah, if there's a movie to this. shit on the shaky cam, it would be this one. Yeah, yeah, we'll be right there with you, Chris, on this one. But um, <laughs> I you know again, it's a Bourne movie. It's not Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, the only thing that I can recall from this movie is that his girlfriend dies. That's. I, all of these blur together for me. Well, speaking of Star Trek, we get a Star Trek alum in this one. <laughs> future. Um, Judge Dredd alum. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Judge Dredd himself. Yes. Yeah. Fucking lawman of the future. Yeah. Carl oh. Urbine. Yes, that's the one. Well, without much further ado, Chris, let's get this show on the road. Yep. So we're watching uh, the Blu-ray version from the same Blu-ray trilogy box set that we watched Born Identity from. You should be good watching it with whatever medium you're using. We have the counter paused at all zeros on the actual feature itself, so go ahead and get that set up and ready to go. I will give you a countdown and tell you to hit play in five, four, three, two, one, play. And there's the sun. We actually kind of filmed this uh, in reverse order. So the stuff in India was the last stuff they filmed. Then the first stuff they filmed was the stuff in Russia. I could have sworn you said we filmed, and I was like, we didn't. We filmed yeah. something? What were you doing yeah, in we 2004? <laughs> Graduating high school. And filming this movie. Wow. I missed this one. I was extensively backpacking in India. <laughs> Is it this one or the next one that he starts having all the flashbacks uh, of his training? The next one. Okay. I yeah. think that's the one that I remember the most facts about in, yeah. this, know, in any single movie. This one's got the... He's dealing with a repressed memory involving his first assassination. You always remember your first. <laughs> Unless you're Jason. He pieces it together eventually. feel so awkward with how quiet it is right now. <laughs> Imagine how they feel. Yeah. They got like 50 people behind the camera watching them do this. I swear to God, it, it just took me a moment to realize that that wasn't a mirror by the sink. I thought it was like a cracked mirror that he had like, it's a fucking barred window. <laughs> so that's how much I'm paying attention. You need to stop drinking before. Mm. Start drinking during. Mm. <laughs> The 
<laughs> Again, this is one of those things where it's like, dude, it's a dialogue sequence. Why do we need the handheld? He's really, really got to pee. Yeah. <laughs> the cameraman is just sitting there like, please, just let me go. We could have this on a tripod. What's probably worse is that it probably is on a tripod and they're like forcing the shakiness. They're just poking at it ever so slightly. The tripod's got to pee. There's that Greg Capullo profile. Hmm. One of his drawings come to life. Love. Love is in the air. Love? The kind you clean up with a mop and bucket? <laughs> like the lost catacombs of Egypt? Only God knows where you stuck it? Yeah. Hieroglyphics? <laughs> <laughs> what a, like, soft opening. <laughs> like, Jason Bourne writes in his journal, <laughs> Today was a good day. <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> Back to school. Very excited. Still have no idea who I am. Yeah. Can't believe Stuck on You wasn't a success. <laughs> Greg Kinnear won't return my calls. It's very sad. Ah, Berlin. City of Angels. Michelle Monaghan. Yeah. Oh, damn. <laughs> I love her. I'd cast her as Lois Lane. When she auditioned for the Mission Impossible film, this is all she put on her resume. Yeah. I was in a Bourne film. Cast me. Good enough. You want to come back for a third and then be basically a cameo in the fourth? Sure, why You're not? You're in. Check out Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. She's delightful. Oh, it's a great movie. Why aren't we watching that? <laughs> is there a sequel coming out sometime soon? Yeah. Please. You have, a, you have a birthday in like five months. And I haven't seen Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. So Ooh, it's a good one. Look at her. She's so pretty. Mm. She's a handsome woman. <laughs> You're not wrong, Jake. It's, she's a handsome woman. She's very like she's got like the turtleneck like thing going on, you know? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know she's good. It's good. Soccer mom in fall. Hey, nice shaved head, man. <laughs> he looks so much like one of my friends from college. It's out of uh, out of fucking bounds. You know, we just put a helmet on him, give him some body armor, a gun that speaks to him, mm -hmm. give him his own movie. Perps were uncooperative. I thought he was looking in a mirror for a second. <laughs> talking to you himself. You and your damn mirrors. They're <laughs> everywhere. That's how I clock in. I remember when uh, Chris and I went up to meet Carl Urban at Awesome Con. My dad was like, he was in Born Supremacy. Like, it, yeah, he loves <laughs> Dread, but it's he like it's the coolest thing in the world. He was in Born Supremacy. And so we went up and we just, you know, went to say hi real quick. And he had all of his, like, different, like, you know, glossy photos out to get signed. Of course, Dread was a big one. Star Trek was probably even bigger, cause especially because the Beyond was just about to come out. Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. And there were some fucking stills from the Born Supremacy. She plays... She, does she play the mom in um, Room? Yes. Yeah, yes. she's got... She's the, There's that one scene they would always play during the Oscars, like, or during any of, like, the best actress stuff. Um, where like they're having like that shouting match that's like super real. She's a great actress. Also, isn't William H Macy the dad? So he bugs out pretty quick. That's true. That's right. There they had those silencers here, but in the first one they had it different director, much more true to form. Paul Greengrass's first note: 
I don't like that sniper, sh- that <laughs> silencer shit. He was. They hired him one because they didn't get along with Doug Lyman during the production of Identity, like we mentioned during mm. that commentary. But they were impressed by Paul Greengrass's film Bloody Sunday. Oh, I've never seen and that. So they. Uh, that's why they got him. Have you? Did you? Have you ever seen Green Zone? Yes. Saw the yeah. Was it it was okay. Remember, my dad rented it so. Yeah, he rented it solely because of this. Yeah. And I think he fell asleep. But he falls asleep during everything. That's not a slight. Slight. Not at all. It's. It's. I enjoyed Green Zone. Fantastic. It was all. It was <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know. I forgot how like Carl Urban's from this from like Jump Street, like yeah. during the beginning. Usually these guys come in like second act. Yeah. Just End of the second act. Like, all they do is scowl. Well, I guess all he really does is scowl. But yeah, he shows up from the beginning. Yeah, but kind of like uh, what uh, Clive, Clive Owen. Owen did last movie, where he was basically really just in the last reel, yeah. for all intents and purposes. Vincent Cassell, I guess, is there pretty early on for. Uh, the Jason Bourne. Oh, that's true. Now I know how to say you're late in yeah. Russian. The bows now. <laughs> he looks so tiny too. Yeah. This would be, what, 12 years ago? Damn, yeah. Five years before he becomes Dr. McCoy? Mm-hmm. Was it eight years before Dread? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Dread being his most pivotal role. Mm-hmm. In my opinion. The girl with the snake Dragon tattoo. tattoo. I do like, I mean, granted, you know, I like Jason Bourne as a character, and it's a bummer that his, let him run, Jesus, um, that his girl gets killed, but it's an interesting way to bring him back into the fold, you know, like, oh, it's not like, hey, you know, huh. The screenwriter's, like, inspiration, because originally there wasn't, like, obviously a universal hope there would, it would be successful enough to get sequels, Um, but there wasn't concrete plans for it. They're like, let's see how it does. And so they're like, well... Now, whereas nowadays, ever like sometimes sequels are greenlit before the motherfucker even comes out. You know, they've already yep. hired screenwriters or directors. And with uh, with this one, when they were crafting Supremacy after the su- surprise success of Identity, they were like, "Well, at the very end of Identity, he's like, if you you know if you come back for me, I will bring you a war. You I will bring it to your doorstep. You really won't believe." Yeah, and so they were like, "Let's do that." <laughs> and I like that. Also, they don't bullshit it. Like they show it on screen. It's not like a movie starts with like. At the funeral, like they really, you know, yeah, they brought her back, and and they gave her, you know, some serious shit to do. It's not just the uh, classic. Uh, let's have the tension mount with the faster Jason Bourne yeah. runs. Yeah. Trope. I'm sweaty. It's a man on a fucking mission, dude. Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> he just like looks weird. I don't know what it is. Like I can't run for shit. Who was I? He wrote, who was I, in big letters, and then, like, scribbled it back and forth. <laughs> Drew a Holy fucking shit. box around. I, I'm not going to be able to remember what movie it was, but there was some movie we watched uh, that we didn't like. I think it was in the theaters. And, like, one of the characters, like, is just circling something over and over again. I can't remember what it was. I can't remember what it was. It's terrible commentary, right? But, like... <laughs> It was like it was something similar like that. Where they're fair, just, Jake, they're all terrible. Yeah, that's true. They're just circling. Except for Batman sixty six. They're just circling like oh, shit, points on the thing, like or water world. dead, murdered, like circled over and over again. Oh, it was uh, Black Mass. Yes, thank you, <laughs> Jesus. I think it's the second time we mentioned that, like in a row. Yeah, he, because someone uh, from, uh, in, uh, in Dr. The, Hopper or yeah. so Sheriff, Hop- Sheriff Hopper. Yeah, the man. Yeah, from Stranger yeah. Things. Stranger Tings. <laughs> tings like that. Tings like this. <laughs> I thought that guy was just raising his hand, but it's on a pole. <laughs> it's just yeah. like Freddie Mercury in it up. Yeah. <laughs> There's that picture. Get used to it, boys. Now, what was their rationale? Was just like, hey, he's still out there, and we got a lead, so now we're going to kill him. Yeah, I mean, the idea is they frame the uh, the sanctions in Berlin on Jason Bourne. Ah, okay. And they kill Jason Bourne to to tie it off. Gotcha. 
But it's not the agency that framed him for it. This though. time, well, it was uh, Conklin, uh, Chris Cooper's character from Identity, was in association with a uh, Russian uh, politician businessman that uh, you know had. There's the first assassination that you, you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I, I, I just showed proved my point again. Like the Bourne movies are like legendary for like the we look for a character and then zoom in to find him yeah. move. Like it's happens. It's happened twice since I was even going to talk about it. Yeah. And it'll happen a lot more. But uh, yeah, the idea is like the first assassination Bourne does was to help this Russian businessman that Conklin was in business with and. uh the f- the files that Carl Urban stole were stuff that exposed that. It's too regular. <laughs> I read the script. Trust me on this. <laughs> It just did that thing on the car. Just zoomed in on it a little bit. Yeah. That was a fine camera movement. It was nice and smooth. Mm-hmm. Enjoy these Chris complimenting the <laughs> cinematography yeah. while they last. It's not going to last <laughs> long. I, I was in, I surprised my, myself. I was the first one to make a comment about it when it started. I feel like this is the one I come across most on TV for some reason. Yeah, me too. I don't know. Maybe it's just the cheapest to license. Yeah, like I want to like I want Ultimatum to be on. Yeah. And it's never on. <laughs> <laughs> you can find that right midday Sunday Friday on TNT to find it. Yeah. Mm. Probably on right now. Characters welcome. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, that's USA. Mm. But they show them a lot on USA too. We know drama. <laughs> Characters was it? Which was the one? Just boom. That's that was a TNT one. Of course, it makes sense. So was we know drama. TBS, funny. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you are. Turner Broadcast. (laughs) That American Dad system. That American Dad and Conan. (laughs) Our entire evening lineup hinges on Conan. (laughs) I love how no one's reacting like this is weird. You know what I mean? They're like, they're like, oh shit! If if movies. S- with you know scenes set in India have taught me anything is that no one pays attention to the traffic because it's constantly crazy like this that's what the movies say I have no idea what the real life is probably not even close to that Damn childproof locks. <laughs> When I see like a car chase or like a car go off like into the water now, I think of that scene in Suicide Squad where uh Harley like tries to like stab mm-hmm. at me and he just knocks her out. <laughs> <laughs> So it was such like an awkward laugh from the audience. Just like, ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> he just punched a woman. <laughs> oh, 
always like that visual. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like the opposite of Splash. <laughs> well, now you know where they got the inspiration, Jake. Yeah, Paul Greengrass was rewinding Splash. Yeah, he's, he's like, like, wait a minute. He's like, holy fuck. Perfect. <laughs> wait, wait. There is no corpse. There is no corpse. Yeah! Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> We've got it. That's cool. Is that the bad guy from Last Action Hero on the I, left? I was literally just thinking that myself. Not not the main bad guy because no, no, that's no. Lannister. Yeah, no, but, uh, but, uh, but no, the guy from uh, from Jack Raincoat. Ryan three or whatever. Yeah, who um, kills his son. Yeah, it is not because if, mm. that, if that was the same guy, it's definitely not. Mm. Damn it! You know, there's like two guys in Hollywood that look kind of like that guy. Yeah, I remember when I every time I watch that, I'm always just. Even though I've seen it, I'm just amazed at how like the makeup job on him in that movie mm-hmm. makes him look just fucking hideous. And he shows up, he just looks like your like shop teacher. Yeah, I actually kind of did look like my creative writing teacher in college. He shaves. He doesn't get to use his natural accent very often does he i'm thinking of like all like the things we know uh carl urban for definitely not in dread not in this so far unless he's doing different accents to be not like in Asian. doom uh not in, in lord of the rings he's got like he's he's uh helped me out with lord of the rings he's it's English, been a while yeah. yeah not even in hercules yeah and, oh yeah and star trek of course not you know you fucked my life I love that Jeep more than I loved her. (laughs) The look of a man who is two payments away from fully owning it. (laughs) And then he just burns a ton of pictures of the Jeep. Yeah. 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 He saves that, dude. (laughs) That's how they get him in the third one. Oh, God. The Jeep's passport, too. Matt Um, Damon has had the same fucking haircut since, like, a long time. I mean, he's got the... Yeah, he's kind of got... A longer wolf, a dude in necessity in like the Martian. Kind of right? like how Leo like kind of has the goatee beard, but not in like everything. Yeah, and in a uh, Goodwill Hunting, Especially he kind of had got it, I guess. almost a mushroom, you know, bowl. Yeah, cut. he does, yeah. he does. But like the born haircut. Yeah, I, I I swear to God, I've gone into places like when this movie came out, and I would just get the fucking born haircut. Yeah. yeah. It's a solid haircut, man. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, a generic low, ma- yeah, low maintenance, yeah. uh, nice shape of the head, the mm-hmm. skull, the cranium, the skull, the skull. Um, <laughs> By the We've way, for, on point with the Jack Nicholson Joker today, Sam. <laughs> By the way, for anyone curious, um, the the actor that we were referring to from Last Action Hero, uh, the Ripper, uh, That's is right. Tom Noonan. You're in for surprise. Not this guy. <laughs> You're in for a shaka. <laughs> Judas Priest. I prefer the Merciful Fate cover. Can't leave a pearl necklace off the manifest. Same guy from Dark Knight Rises. That oh, it is? Yeah. Complains about the pearl necklace being missing. It wouldn't be <laughs> out of bounds for us to just randomly quote a Batman movie. That's why I was like, oh, okay, nice. Marty. Marty. Look at how far back that chair is. Like, would somebody sit in that for a conversation? <laughs> That's where the cigarette smoking like, man Could sits. you pass the salt? Mm-hmm. Do you like eating here? <laughs> I, 
I don't think I've ever been in this room. <laughs> this is where he meets Hobo uh, Clark Kent. Uh, Torino and Big Apple. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Typing. Uh. Positive. God, I miss Windows 95. <laughs> there it is. Ooh, we kind of get a different angle there. A variant cover, if you will. <laughs> that was the second yearbook photo they took of him. That was the um, the Jack Kirby exclusive c- cover. Same one, but he just, he drew it. There it is again. Christ almighty. It's like four times already. Ooh. Five times, six times. <laughs> so many. When you have one really good yearbook photo, you just don't ever take it again. Amnesia? Question mark? Uh, Chris Cooper. I like him, man. People are always like, you know, like on the uh, Gilbert Gapu podcast, they always like to ask, like, who are your favorite char- character actors and stuff? Chris Cooper's solid. But so is Sheriff Hopper. Brian Dennehy. Brian Dennehy. Hi, I'm Brian Dennehy. Who? What the fuck? There he is. Brian Cox, the actor. <laughs> you can also see him in For Love of the Game. This is true. Starring Kevin Costner. <laughs> the cause, if you will. <laughs> He's got... The fiercest fucking eagle like statue behind him. There it is. Look at that shit. Kaka, yeah, bitch. you motherfucker! <laughs> I was just gonna go kaka, motherfucker. A lot of this movie is like just clearance talk and sitting. Brian Cox, the liar. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta clean my glasses to see this one. Clean my claws. So I'm, I'm always on the on the hunt for uh, like who my Commissioner Gordon would be in the Dark Knight Returns adaptation. Mm. It wouldn't be Brian Cox, but I, I was thinking, I was like, <laughs> who would Brian Cox? Be? But like, you know, Melly, Melly Gibbs mm. as the bat. Mel G. Jane Levy <laughs> as Carrie Fisher. Carrie. Carrie Keller. Kelly. What the fuck? Carrie Kelly. Yeah. Did I say Jane Levy as Carrie Fisher? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd, I mean, I'd, I'd be okay that'd with be that fine. Too. Biopic. <laughs> Had an interesting life. Uh, but she'd be Carrie Kelly. Um We'll figure it out. Has X2 happened yet? Yep, came out the previous year. Mm. Frazier is ending, so he's had his run on Frazier, his solid run. There it is. That's the last time I'm going to mention it, but Jesus. But it won't be the last time you see it. Mm-mm. Yeah. You guys ever seen Manhunter? I think we probably asked that before. Brian Cox, the original Hannibal Lecter. Yep. I started watching it, but I had like just watched Silence of the Lambs, so ah. I was like, eh. um, Gil from CSI. Mm-hmm. It's the one hunting him in that one. Scott Peterson, if you're wondering. Yeah. I wasn't. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> so I, I only Dear Diary <laughs> knew the actor from CSI when I saw that film. Yeah. Look how quick everyone's like, ho, 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 ho. I think that's quick. See how fast he puts these guards down. <laughs> <laughs> Those guards are fine. But in the, <laughs> give him a, the, the second set, mm. they don't make it out okay. <laughs> they don't do it. Ooh, hello. <laughs> I like that it lingered on him just long enough to see him like weirdly itch the side of his face. Mm-hmm. Character. <laughs> that guy looks like Neil Patrick Harris in the end. I know it's not, but... Uh... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they cast that guy for his face. You <laughs> know oh, it. there's that photo again. Indeed. 
Thanks, Jake. <laughs> Yes, the famed Depot Auszug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Was that a Batman yeah. 89 Hard reference, <laughs> Sam? <laughs> Set it on the screen. Depot <laughs> Auszug. You think there's that photo just taped all around the walls of the CIA, and every time someone runs across it, they have to yell at, It's Jason Bourne. <laughs> sure. Jason Bourne. <laughs> Picks up a picture of him. This Jason Bourne? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen him in other stuff, too. back of his head I'm glad that it had that sound effect like whoosh just so you knew oh it's Jason Bourne I love that there is like Jason Bourne is unresponsive until like this dude gets a fucking phone call and like he's like downcast, but That's it's he knows it's on. <laughs> like as soon as Jason Bourne looks up, it's like, oh, he's gonna get like his ass pounded. Mm. Oh yeah, Wayward Pines. He's in think the second season just wait for it as soon as he looks up it's when he knows that he knows really now that I'm looking at this film again there's only one scene where the shaky cam is like get the fuck out of here and it's the magazine part yeah where he fights the dude with the uh, knife he's got a, the, the his opponent has a butcher knife and he has a magazine mm. the idea was to kind of choreograph the uh, or they were they were looking at like common household items he could use, and when they were kind of practicing, they were using like rolled up magazines. They're like, you know, this actually kind of hurts, <laughs> and so they, <laughs> that's where the idea for him using a rolled up magazine came about. <laughs> I fucked up. <laughs> uh, wasn't that funny? <laughs> but thank you for uh, laughing. It just fucking tickled me pink. Mm-hmm. Break out the Crayolas and color me tickled pink. Seven five seven area code. That's Virginia Beach. Whoa. Well, now we know where she lives in this universe. (laughs) Well, where she bought her cell phone. This means like respect, respect, respect. (laughs) 
Get that Damon picture everywhere. <laughs> Chris sent it to me and I had just downloaded it. I tweeted about the amount of times you see in just this movie alone is fucking astounding. And then I tweeted it. I just sent it to each, like not just our group chat, mm-hmm. but each one of your individual accounts too. <laughs> Guys, you know what that photo is? Hmm. The symptoms. <laughs> the symptoms are everywhere. <laughs> so is this Jason Bourne bug <laughs> shot. Have you guys ever woken up like that? Uh, I've woken woken up short of breath before, but I think that was more based on like my sleeping posture. Like, I guess it was like hard to breathe, and so I was like, mm. "But no, I mean, I've never. I suppose maybe from like a nightmare, but I don't usually wake up like short of breath. Not from a nightmare, no. Yeah, same. Or just kind of like wake up like, uh, <laughs> like yeah. What was that? <laughs> Ah, Amsterdam, the Windy City. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Julia Stiles. Mm. The Windy Woman. (laughs) (laughs) I don't want to wait. You know who Julia Stiles used to date? Oh, was it uh, Chief uh, Hooper? Hopper? I keep saying Hooper because of uh, uh, Keep It Steady, Hooper from Jaws. I believe we mentioned that on the last commentary. I'll probably mention it next week, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, I'm okay with it. Just just, just saying it for the astute listener out there who's like, Bah, they said it last week. Mm-hmm. And why would you? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Tweet at us. Yeah. Zach. <laughs> yeah. No, Zach doesn't listen to our commentaries. Well. Because oh. he's a dick. <laughs> we can make fun of Zach all we want in these commentaries. Do we have to tweet at Zach to listen at our commentaries to tweet at us? Yeah. Okay. That's all you. I will say I think Supremacy probably has my favorite soundtrack in the whole series. It's got a nice golden eye vibe to it. Kind of, yeah. Kind of this weird like industrial but meshed with classical orchestration. Mm Mm-hmm. I approve. (laughs) Oh, good to see Michelle Monaghan still in the mix. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite song to be on a Madden fucking video game? Is it yeah, yeah, yeah? I don't even know if that is. The, the NHL ones have a good one too. Mm. Have good uh, scores, score soundtracks. Wait for it. Wait for it. Who says fucking scary version in like common convers? I'll tell you who. Julia Stiles. Mm-hmm. They look like mother daughter. <laughs> Maybe that's the plot twist that we won't ever find out. Head cannon. Yeah. 
Sob. <laughs> <laughs> That's Martin Sokus. He's in Amazing Spider-Man 2 as the Mad Scientist. Yep. Probably the worst character in that film. Hey, Martin Sokus. Sokus this. <laughs> Fuck yeah. these glasses. Yeah, it's this coming fight scene where I'm like, this maybe doesn't happen. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got me. <laughs> Tag your head, motherfucker. What if that was his fucking finisher? That? I, who is he? Uh, in Amazing Spider-Man Two, the Mad Scientist. Yeah, the one that like has like Electro and the weird like thingy that strung up. Oh, okay, okay. I was I honestly f- totally forgot about that part, and I like that movie. <laughs> was yeah. that a pantry or a fridge he opened up? Looked like a fridge. fridge. Honestly, yeah. yeah. That gun would be cold, wouldn't it? <laughs> I feel like he. You kind of see him like reach into his jacket as he's opening the. Fr- I feel like the fridge was just a feint. Huh. Herm. <laughs> it's one of my favorite comic book like think noise Herm <laughs> that's used in the long Halloween. I know that because I'm a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you can admit it now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. When when are you gonna join the party? <laughs> it's got one of my favorite artists on that run. Oh uh, yeah. Tim Sale. I have, uh, I have a piece of Batman artwork by him. That's Dope. Got it from him in Seattle. Mm. I've got a uh, Batman statue done by one of his artworks. Mm. Is it the black and white? Yeah. That's a great statue. And he did great art on Heroes as well. He did. Oh, he did? Working with his collaborator, Jeff Loeb. Mm-hmm. Finally finished Captain America White. But that's a different story for a different day. Mm-hmm. Ha, day's not over yet, buddy. <laughs> now I'm going to kill you. I thought there's no music. Yeah, just ambient noise. Like, it's just like here where you're like, what's... Like, this is fine, obviously. It's yeah, like, but, the, but the shot right before it, like, yeah. the camera, yeah. like, flipped. When they're into it, the wider shots, obviously, are fine, but... It's got to be awkward, like, when, like, they they say cut, yeah. and they're just like... Like, the, you know, you have, like, even you know, obviously, they don't hate each other. Like, yeah. they don't mean to hurt each other, but, like, you get that, like... That you got energy the going, 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 yeah, it's got to be like this weird kind of come down. What? No answering machine, bro. <laughs> the fuck. <laughs> He's a former s- assassin. They don't leave messages <laughs> or take them, apparently. So you were saying that like, they came up with this because they were like the magazine actually kind of hurt. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, they were just looking at common household items to kind of use for this fight scene, and they were like, "Well, magazines." <laughs> Yeah, and when you stab a guy with a magazine, it leaves a huge hole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, remember an alien? Yeah. Ripley almost gets choked out by a magazine. It's still hard for me to... Oh, yeah, it's a weird... It's yeah. tough. Yeah. I almost said hard for me to swallow, and I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I stopped myself. Everywhere. <laughs> what the... For saying, I know it's not, but it looks like it's it's his own foot. Yeah. Yeah, Jason Bourne, yoga master. It's one yeah. of the things the CIA teaches. That's what him. he was doing down to <laughs> in India. Yeah, yeah. India. I want to learn straight from the source. Yeah, and I also learned how to choke people. Herm this. <laughs> you know who Martin Sokus dated for years? Who? Not Julia, Julia Stiles. Stiles? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that was weird. Get in stereo sound. Uh, the, uh, Ava Green. Motherfucker. 
Mm. <laughs> yes, please. Glad he, glad he got <laughs> fake choked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you did. It's my magazine. <laughs> he goes full hog with that thing. He's like, man, use it multiple levels. I will say, again, movie's, you know, not over yet, obviously, he said. But, like, I'm enjoying this more than I remembered. Mm. Mm. I don't, yeah, I never thought Supremacy was a bad film. I just no, didn't think it is it was the weak. As... Yeah, but, I mean, like, honestly, like, now, now that I'm watching it, what was better, Supremacy or Identity? Well, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm saying, because, like, we, oh, you're dead. Everybody's dead. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, rewatching Identity, I definitely liked it, but, like, there was... Is it the transitions and shits? Yeah, like it wasn't. It's it's very dated. Yeah. You know, it's been the first time Probably like it's I sat, the most stylized. First time I watched it sitting through like set from the beginning to the end in a while. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, that was good. That was good, sir. That was good. <laughs> It was especially funny because usually when Sam sneezes, he sits there for a little. You also like engulfs his whole face and just kind of like. I'm alive. But that one, he was like, "I have something to say." I see every every, face today. Every sneeze is a roll of the dice. Sometimes I make it out. Sometimes I don't. (laughs) This is McDonald's. (laughs) <laughs> I'm loving it. <laughs> you can thank Pete Holmes for that joke. Or hate him. Yeah. <laughs> Just lay into that bass, motherfucker. I mean, groove is in the heart. Yeah. Total eclipse of the heart. <gasps> The symptoms are everywhere. Yeah. Anybody want to see uh, Heart Cheap Trick and uh, Joan Jett at Jiffy Lube on the 11th? It's a Sunday. How yeah, much I mean, would I'm... that bankrupt me? For lawn seats? I don't know. It's, do you already have like tickets? 20, 30 bucks. Yeah. Do you already oh, have tickets? Wow. I do, yeah. Uh, I, I'm usually off Sundays. That'd be... I mean, we're usually here Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even if I was working, yeah, even if I was working, I'd probably get off in time. Yeah. Or record during the day, you mm-hmm. know. We've done that before. Yeah, because I'm usually off Sundays. Mm. How far in advance is this? The 11th, so... It's like two weeks. Mm-hmm. Exactly two weeks, yeah. Yeah, that's how bad it was though. That was very, like, melodic, the way she said that. Mm. German, you know, people... I love the German language. Yeah. I work with two... Um, my boss and then um, one of my co-workers... Spy are, Deutsche are Leute... Oh, German, yeah. You know who's learning German? Peter Milligan. That's right. <laughs> that interview is available now. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> oh, good for you. <laughs> hey, um, I'm just looking up the fucking VMAs because whatever. David Bowie won Best Art Direction for what? Black Star. Black Star. Well, I mean, uh, Art Director, obviously. Yeah. Posthumously, unfortunately. Yeah, that's you know, the... I posted a David Bowie gif, and it, you know, it's been I didn't know the guy. It's been seven months, but still, it's just like, oh, yeah, like it, to, to be reminded of it. You know, yeah. my uh, the Michael Jackson Video Vanguard Award went to Rihanna. Rihanna is bae. <laughs> There's not as many things. Let's see. Oh, I guess they haven't done some because I hope Rihanna wins best female video. Just for shits and gigs, um, if you because this is like a, just a traveling scene. If you guys were, <laughs> if you guys were making a Batman story, would you have him have the black logo on the chest or the yellow symbol on the chest? Josh, go first. Whatever you say sticks. 
forever. Yeah, and also long ears or short ears. Long ears or short ears. Does that mean forever? <laughs> I just said that out loud out of context. Oh, shit. It's from Louis C.K. Um, I'd go for the 89 look. See, I, I, as much as I would want to, I love that that's forever just associated with 89, but I respect your choice. Long ears or short ears? Long. Because he had long ears for that one. Well, I mean, you could switch it up. It's your goddamn story. It's the goddamn Batman. I, no, no, he wants an exact. You want the exact kind of '89 of. look? Yeah. Michael okay. Keaton in the suit. Okay. Uh, Sam or Chris? Long ears, black symbol. Okay. So, like, I mean, that's fucking long Halloween style. Um, Same long, long Halloween ears. Style. Here's where my crisis comes in. Your crisis on Infinite Jakes. Yeah. Our brand is crisis. Yeah, because I love the yellow logo. I would do the yellow logo. <laughs> But I think I would do short ears. As much as I love like, the Jim Aparo, like growing up, growing up reading that. Oh, he's got the blue cowl too in that. Yeah. Well, I would do the blue. I would do basically the Jim Aparo, but with the short ears. Basically, kind of like Dark Knight Returns. Look at that shit. That's a good that one. Perfect shot right there. That's a good shot. Oh, oh shit! Oh, shit, oh, shit. Born, 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 born. What if he just fucking iced her and he was like, "Next." <laughs> yeah. Credits. <laughs> I'm supreme. The Bourne supremacy. Is this the this is Jason this, Bourne will return? <laughs> this is. I swear to God. This this line coming up. The the you know the the not infamous the famous like is this the you know look tie or whatever thing. That's at the very end. It, oh, okay, it's at the very end. The um, someone reminded me of that scene, and it had been years since I watched these movies, and I was like, oh yeah, and I rewatched the trilogy in like one night because of that one scene. I was like, that's bad ass. Or maybe it was just the first two were out, and then I saw Born, Born Ultimatum in theaters. Also, Josh, would you have Robin or no Robin? No Robin. Okay. Boys. Robin could exist, but he wouldn't necessarily be integral to the story. Okay. Kind of like, you know, Robin in um, Arkham City. Okay. Uh, I think I'd have Robin. Okay. No Robin. I like Robin, but no Robin. Mm. Round Robin. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one, too. You have to build to Robin. Yeah. Bosh. Bosh. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> Savior of the Boshiverse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look at that Bosh thing again. Bosh. <laughs> what if it was like a ah. scene for scene recreation of like when it says Axis Chemicals and Batman's like uh, like you know sh- you know eighty nine and like throws his cape and it's just born just going oh in front of the Bosch symbol <laughs> and we don't see him again for like forty minutes. Nikki. Nikki. Oh, nice. Take a look. It's in a book. <laughs> Literally, it's called The Born Supremacy. Mm-hmm.
How many times can we say tram? Hey, by the way, she's on the tram, guys. And we need you to zoom in on the tram. What about the south side, guys? Keep an eye on the south side. I'm a doctor, damn it. <laughs> Kyle Higgins tweeted, so what are we watching tonight? And I so badly just wanted to tell him Batman 89, but I was like, <laughs> born supremacy. In a few days, that will be true, though. For some of us, at least. Hmm. pretty sure he says that a lot in these movies like this ends now yeah he yeah ends a lot of things in these movies who am i <laughs> You know my name! For a second, I thought that was Brian Cox in the background. I was like, why is he just letting him walk past him? <laughs> Do you mean the actor Brian Cox? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just want to make sure we're talking about the actor Brian Cox. <laughs> you know, he was in... Um... <laughs> Kyle Higgins liked the Born Supremacy tweet. <laughs> I've already forgotten what... the the uh, the the For Love of the Game. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. J.K. Simmons and John C. Riley. Yeah. They should have had Brian Cox's middle name in there and be the, the trio of trios mm. names. Tree bros. Snake eyes. Snake eyes. I'm so glad that this is a long time ago. That spider bite healed because I couldn't snake <laughs> eyes for such the longest time. Still no abilities? No, I'm just getting dumber, actually. Mm.
my penis. <laughs> Let's watch Constantine, guys. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. And stay for the after credits, yeah. which I had watched that movie for years and had no idea right. it was in. No, same. And then I watched it and I was like, I just like I'd left it on. Watch that. <laughs> I just left it on one day and like was doing stuff. And then I heard like a scene start up and I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> It was it was like it was like Super Mario Brothers. Oh God, that, <laughs> that waste end of an scene. end scene. <laughs> Why, hello. <laughs> It looked like a dating profile headshot. That much shaky cam was not needed for that many web searches. No. I mean, Chris, when you search for stuff, do you bob your head around nonstop? No, it's not like I'm boxing Muhammad Ali. Jake, you? Um, no. I wish you weren't that smart, kid. That was the moment he knew. That's why you never show just one person. You bring the whole office with you. Uh-huh. <laughs> Imagine Brian Cox is trying to stab everyone. Yeah, in he that goes time. like politely to each person. <laughs> Hey, what's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, what's that? Hey, hey, hey look over there. Hey, is, what's are your shoes untied? He <laughs> just every fucking. And for some reason, people keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Brian Cox. I can trust him. Yeah. It's like the slowest room clearing from an Arkham <laughs> game ever. <laughs> like he's perched on a vantage point. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He has detective mode on. <laughs> I will say Josh I don't want to spoil it for anybody uh, for the Arkham Knight stuff but the end of that game is pretty fucking challenging and that that was that was the, the one of the few times I was like this fucking Batmobile but I'll just yeah but, you know yeah I will say again don't want to spoil anything for it I activated something but now I have to beat the rest of the game on 100% to get the rest of the thing, which was like, what the fuck did I do all that for? Then you fuck. Mm-hmm. But there was a guy who showed up that I was very happy to see. That was the most cryptic thing, but I think you understood what I was saying. Did he have a sword? Oh. I know who you mean. Yeah. I hated fighting him. I will say that was one of my bigger disappointments at how you fought him. Although I, I was hated looking fighting for... him in Origins more. Oh, did you? I was looking forward to something like Origins times two. Oh, God, no, I hated that fight so and much. I, I, and I was kind of bummed out at how they ended up doing it. Same with... Now, 
Yeah. Do you have uh, have you like more for all intents and purposes beaten the game? I beat the main story. Yeah. Now it's I have to beat. All I the didn't s- understand had, that end scene. You had the big I have reveal to beat at all the. End. the I have to yeah, but then I have to beat all the side missions a hundred percent to get the add on to. So basically, you beat the game main mm-hmm. story. Then you have to take down six of Gotham's most wanted to yep. activate a final boss battle with someone who shows up, which is awesome. And then you can also activate something that I thought was going to be the wrap up, but then it's like, nope. If you beat now everything 100, percent you get the rest of the cinematic thing. So I have an idea what it is. Good but, luck. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I only got like three more things to do, three or four more things to do. So, and I, you know, I'm still enjoying Including the, game, the races. But... Well, I mean, my thing was the uh, the rest of the uh, not the races, but the um, the rest of the apprehending stuff, like okay. the, the big circle wheel, circle wheel, the big wheel. Yeah, I mean, if you get to the races and end up breaking the controller, I wouldn't yeah. blame you. Yeah, but it's I'm still I'm still digging it, man. And I enjoyed the first episode of the Telltale game. Beat that. Beat that. You know, I was thinking while I was, you know... Stinking? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, how, I think the most surreal thing to happen to me the entire month of August... I mean, there's still like a... You know, at the time of recording, there's, there's still, you know, a couple of days left. But how weird is it... D. Snyder's son? Yeah. How is it, How weird is it that we're e-friends with Z's, D. Snyder's son now? It's pretty wild. Yeah. He, uh, I don't know about you because you were busy but uh, <laughs> he followed us on twitter he followed follows me personally on twitter now yeah nice. yes. that's what i meant he yeah he, oh yeah he, jake and i oh cool yeah don't know i i don't i don't think i got a notification that he follows the show though that's fair yeah one of the trivia pieces on imdb for born supremacy is jason Bourne never smiles in the movie except in a picture <laughs> which picture there's a picture, yeah. There's a picture of uh, Frank Patente, like around him, and he's just like, Arr! yeah, because it's definitely not this picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually surprised to find out this movie's under two hours. Yeah. yeah. By like twelve minutes. Yeah, we only have like forty minutes left, guys. Yeah. M- you know, give or take a couple minutes for credits. Yeah, we've already seen ugly crying Julia Stiles. Mm. The best Julia Stiles. <laughs> <laughs> the only Julia. Oh, nice mask, bruh. I couldn't tell. Iowa Cop. Hmm. Times 10. Ooh, even cooler mask. Has Iowa Cop emailed you back yet? No, it's not happening. Jerk. <laughs> Still my favorite, though. He's pretty... You should just like follow to see if he ever goes to a convention. <laughs> Amy, he's in enough movies that are convention worthy. I will say with like Brian Cox's character in the Conklin stuff, I do feel like supremacy of the original trilogy has the most convoluted plot. Mm. But, you know, obviously having seen the film for like 12 years, I can follow along what's going along now. Yeah, I mean, it tries to add in and tie up stuff from the first film while having its own new narrative, which never makes for a good narrative, period. <laughs> I don't know if I'd say it's a bad narrative, but it is. There's a lot of like wheels within wheels, you know. It, it can if you're going if you're watching it casually, it can be hard to follow. It's just like oh, now he's like in Moscow for some reason. Well, that's his superhuman ability. He can just teleport through Europe. Yeah, 
God, that would be the power I would want. You know, <laughs> just Europe though. Yeah, oh, I can't. I would can't, still be happy as a would, clam. <laughs> you, you, but but the problem is you're in America right now, so you still have to fly to Europe yeah. to yeah. start teleporting. I would get the cheapest flight, which I think is Iceland, <laughs> and then yeah, I would. Yeah, <laughs> still technically Europe. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Just find like a European territory. If you could go anywhere in Europe, where would it be? Ireland. Wales. I want to visit my heritage. <laughs> kind of the same reason for me. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, London. London. <laughs> Well, it's it, nice. Keep it to the aisles. <laughs> yeah. See, whereas I would just be like Paris. Ah, Paris, my city. Yeah, my city. <laughs> you just get on top of the Eiffel Tower like Batman style. Yeah. <laughs> I like because of this jump for the rest of this film into the beginning of Ultimatum. Bourne has a limp mm. after the time jump at the after the prologue in Ultimatum. He obviously like. Is better is mobile fully mobile again, but yeah, for the rest of this film into the prologue of the next, he's sporting this injury. That was something Greengrass wanted to stress that this guy isn't like he doesn't have a healing factor. He doesn't magically get better between each scene. He's gonna there's gonna be some wear and tear. Much like um, uh, the Mad Max in uh, the first one and and Road Warrior. Good use of continuity. Which is, again, particularly impressive because the Moscow stuff is filmed first. <laughs> and so they were like, well, we have to show why he's limping, you know. And we have to make sure he's limping in every se- every single sequence in this first, like, bit of the film that we're making, even though it's technically the last bit of the film. Yeah, fuck it. I'm just going to say Born Supremacy is better than Born Identity. I've hit that point. It's a lot greener. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. All those, uh, what filters are they using? Green ones, apparently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the uh, it's the uh, Matrix Reloaded filter. Yeah. Mm. I feel like they were using like kind of almost like an orange glow filter for some of the India sequences. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Except for the underwater sequence, which is totally green. Yep. Uh, completely full of shit, Brian Cox. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Fuck you, Brian, you are. (laughs) Sure, Brian. (laughs) What a prick. (laughs) What is your favorite Brian Cox performance, and why is it Super Troopers? (laughs) (laughs) Shenanigans. Oh. We just got word. <laughs> it was the bird. <laughs> you freaking turds. I knew he wasn't going to take a car.
get born by Chet. Supposedly, that's where they got the title from for their debut album, Get Born, even though they spell it differently, obviously, was from the Born Identity. Hmm. And they got their name Jet from the Wings song Jet by Paul McCartney and Wings. Yes. Born, uh, band, born to run. Band, <laughs> band on the Run, track two. Jason Born on the Run. He's just a head. He's a floating head. <laughs> He's like, he's like bouncing. He's like, yeah, it's Jason Bourne. Yeah. <laughs> fucking zombie back there. Look at this. Here. Look at this. like a fucking like, uh, album cover. Yeah. It's Theater Black Box. It kind of looks like um, that scene in Halloween where you see Jamie Lee Presley. Or Jamie Lee. <laughs> yes, it's Jamie Lee Presley. It's forever Jamie Lee Presley. You can't fix it. Don't, don't think of her in a real name. Keep going with your story. And just then, like how I say Carrie Fisher instead of <laughs> Carrie Kelly. And and then uh uh Michael Myers just kind of appears out of the background. <laughs> they had to shine a special light just on his mask to get that effect. Kill me, do it! Mission Kill me now accomplish. Because <laughs> it was a tape recorder, not a gun. I wonder what it would have sounded like with the uh, Ionator on it. <laughs> what was that shake? I didn't see it. <laughs> I don't even know who that is. <laughs> it's uh, Yuri Van Gelder from the... Uh... <laughs> Was that that guy that you guys were talking about last commentary so much? Oh, we were talking about him at IHOP. IHOP, that's what it was. Yes, sir. If you're as confused as I am about this, tweet at us. <laughs> Just to prove no one actually listens to these commentaries. Josh. <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> you smug Fuck you, piece of shit. <laughs> Motherfucker. You fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm all short singer. <laughs> so, in theaters. Chuck got the killer guy was shoved a snake down his throat. It's not euphemism. Euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> not, it's not his dick. It's an actual snake. It just happens snake. to be his dick. <laughs> oh, ah! no. oh no! <laughs> That's the sound you made, by the way. That's the sound, Pamela Landy. Ah! <laughs> it's okay. The only other person ever to hear it's dead. <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> the lady on the train. <laughs> Starring Emily Blunt, who appeared with Matt Damon in The Adjustment Period. Oh! Hey, hey, Jake. Jake. Yeah. Let's open a door to another world. Set nope. that again. Yeah. God. Best yearbook photo ever. <laughs> there's, oh. the, there's the smiling picture. Oh, you <laughs> fuck. The only time he smiles. You have a nice smile, Matt. You should smile more. Who said you? <laughs> <laughs> he looks at it and thinks, damn it. Why did I forget to burn this one? Where's my Jeep photo? <laughs> I don't have enough privacy in this car for the Jeep photo to come out. That's something you want to hear intelligence say. Who, who's this? <laughs> Who this? Remember this? Yeah. Um, we there, there's we got a new one. New face. A 
obligatory early 2000s club scene. The scene from The Dark Knight four years earlier. <laughs> oh, I thought there was something wrong with our DVD. <laughs> because like when she turned, she looked so horribly pixelated. <laughs> but then I realized, no, it's just t- a terribly pixelated picture is being projected onto her body. Hey, Carl Urban's in this movie still. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's drinking as he realizes that. Like, oh, God. <laughs> no. I, I God. Do, I do love the incongruity that you think it's like a fucking like, nighttime club, and it's like fucking in the middle of the day. <laughs> it's just like Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Time has no meaning in Vegas. Nope. All the windows are blocked out. <laughs> yep. And they pump oxygen into the casinos. <laughs> I guess we're both disappointed in ourselves. (laughs) What did we learn? Nothing. (laughs) Fucking nothing. Even better! He's got the Matrix like fucking long leather jacket. Yo, Carl Urban. <laughs> yeah, you specifically. Matrix Revolutions already came out. <laughs> it wasn't that great. Not as bad as people make it out to be, but still not that great. <laughs> still the weakest. That's tough. That is for me. It's a toss up between Ultimatum, if only because Ultimatum doesn't really have an ending, and the freeway chase goes on like five minutes longer than it should. Uh, I don't know. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just me. But yeah. When I'll know say, in a couple weeks. Wait, when you say Ultimatum, I thought we were talking about the Matrix. Yeah. You mean oh. Reloaded? Oh. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I thought you liked Ultimatum. <laughs> yeah, Ultimatum is my favorite. I, yeah, I, I was responding to the to the Matrix comment, but then I was, I was like, like oh, second. maybe I misheard and just yeah. went with you. I because uh, usually I like, that's the case. I like Reloaded more. It's tough. It's tough. I actually, I saw the last one, the third one in theaters. Yeah, me too. And I, I had never seen any of the other ones before it. <laughs> My friend was like, should we should go? I was like, all right, I like Keanu Reeves. And I was thoroughly confused. <laughs> Don't worry. Even those of us that saw all three in theaters were still thoroughly confused. <laughs> yep. Um, I like all the fight scenes. Yes. Yeah. Those are, those, I mean, like with a lot of action movies, those those were the best parts. Um, I did enjoy some of the humor in Reloaded as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think overall, out of the two subsequent sequels, at least, Reloaded is still like the better one. But I, something, uh, I, I think Revolutions came out at just the right time for me mm-hmm. uh, because it was like, I want to say it was like kind of almost in the middle of my like stint of being into anime and Dragon Ball Z. And that final fight scene was totally. Goku versus Frieza. Yeah, I totally love that that last fight. Yeah, the rest of the movie, eh? Yeah. Especially all the stuff in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> the weird like mech warrior fights yeah. with all the Sentinels. <gasps> you fuck her. I recently rewatched the the trilogy, and like I was like, I don't remember this stuff, like the mech warriors and stuff like that. I was like, I don't remember this stuff at all. <laughs> They had their own character poster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Literally had just forgotten about it. Still one of the least menacing, I guess not menacing, but like just like the, the goofiest police siren sound I've ever heard. Wee oh, wee oh. Yeah. Not exactly what I want like the police to sound like. It just sounds like a toy. Come on, Carl Urban, you can do better than that. What does FSB stand for? Uh, Federated uh, Security. I don't know what the B stands for. (laughs) Burvis. Ronnie Mervis. <laughs> God, be, because my because my phone uh, stores like the pictures that are sent to me in Messenger. If I try to send you guys the picture, look at this, Jake. Look at my phone. S- scroll across. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Matt Damon. Chris Jericho. Did I, Jake? Did I send you that? <laughs> We're just sending each other oh, yeah. pictures back and forth, by the way. Oh, hey, blue filter. And back to green. When I first saw that Robocop photo you sent me, I was like, that's a cool poster. And then I didn't see the googly eyes till like I kind of woke up a little bit. I was like, oh, shit. I like that he gets like vodka that's so fucking strong it disinfects his wound. And he also uses it to temporarily blind a policeman. Or maybe permanently blind a policeman. I don't really fucking know. <laughs> it is All vodka. Above. And it is terrible. Mm-hmm. That's not true. I don't think vodka is terrible. I do. <laughs> it's not gin. <coughs> Gin's terrible. You take that back. I will never take that back. Gin is awful. There's something magical about drinking a Christmas tree, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> if by Christmas tree you mean rubbing alcohol, hey Christmas tree, <laughs> with with the taste of rubbing alcohol, which is to say bad, then yeah, sure. See, that's always the comparison I make to vodka. Oof. Yeah, he's blinded for life. He's like, what? You want me to try to? This, I love the song. Bim Bam Crash is the name of the song on the soundtrack set to this fight or chase sequence. I like it better than Ready, Steady, Go from the first film. I was kind of, it kind of makes me think of um, Hardcore Henry, mm. seeing like Moscow on foot from the ground in that film, which is something you don't normally see. You usually just see like Mission, like Ghost Protocol, just like Red Square in the Kremlin. But both this and Hardcore Henry, you got to actually see like fucking Moscow. Would Didn't you... we in Goldeneye as well? 
takes place in St. Petersburg, though it wasn't filmed there. Mm. Would you watch Hardcore Henry again? Or just skip to the third act? I would watch it again, but I wouldn't... I'd watch it again. I wouldn't own it for full price, but if it was ever like a $5 like HDX deal of the week... And there wasn't anything else going. I might peek over that fence. You know, I, I might pick, I make that purchase. I saw that. You know, that obviously it's available on Voodoo, and I was like, "Oh, sh- I kind of want to watch it again." He's not getting the security deposit back on that car. Yeah. I do love how, like, not... It's a much dirtier car chase than Identities, you know? Mm-hmm. Identity, he doesn't really hit much. Like, he's, like, pretty spot on. There's that one part where he barely makes it through, like, that alley. But uh, with this one, he's getting, like, you know, nobody's coming out of this car chase pristine. Touchdown. <clears throat> Great car chase. Mm. Yeah. This and Ultimatum have some of the best, like, just in fucking cinema in general, you know? No frills, just cars getting beat the fuck up. For some reason, the car chase in, like, Vegas, like, in Jason Bourne is just weird. Because it's just Vincent Cassell, like, fucking up any vehicle in his way. Whereas this one, and again, Ultimatum is much more, I mean, it's a fucking epic chase, but it's somehow less over the top. There's still a human element there. I won't kill you. One, because you're already dead. Two. (laughs) (laughs) Three, I forgot to say the line, stop following me or I'll bring this fight to your doorstep. One, one, because you're already dead. Two, and more importantly, (laughs) to send a message. One thing, and I mentioned it when we talked about our little review of Jason Bourne, you know, the fourth film, um, the fight scene at the end, I still think is the most brutal in any Jason Bourne film. And, you know, there's already, as you see in this movie, there's some brutal shit that goes down. But in that one, they go fucking hard in Act 3. Oh, hey, there's only like 15 minutes left in the movie. I'll have to, like, actually rewatch Jason Bourne maybe when it comes out because, like I said, I was asleep for the first act. But, like, <laughs> it just it just didn't, like, again, uh, I'm, I'm bummed because, like, you know, rewatching this especially, like, you know, I really do, like, the Jason Bourne trilogy and it didn't bring anything new. And when I thought it was going to try to go somewhere new, it just relied on an old, 
you know, it, the Random old tricks. Girl walking in the park. And so, yeah. So, you know. Or is that someone important? I just didn't recognize it. The Julia Stiles? <laughs> Was it Julia Stiles? It's not Julia nope. Stiles. It's this Russian. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Girl, daughter of the uh, people he killed in Berlin. Mm. Oh, okay. So, technically, we don't know who she is yet. Gotcha. You can uh, watch Jason Bourne uh, with me because I still haven't seen it yet. Mm. And uh, I figured I'd wait until we were done. I think it's still at Corner. Yeah, it's still playing. Well, if it's still there in two weeks. This reminds me at the end of Quantum of Solace, even though it's not the same cir- circumstance at all. Yeah. In fact, the film was originally supposed to end with this Moscow sequence with him, you know, having the confession with the daughter and walking away. But test audiences thought it was too much of a downer. So, mm-hmm. like, two weeks before the premiere, Greengrass grabbed Damon from the Ocean's 13 set. Or no, uh, I guess it'd be 12 set at the time. And filmed the little epilogue for New York City. Hmm. Which then, when they got greenlit for a sequel, they're like, well, what do we do? And they're like, well, let's just incorporate the epilogue into Ultimatum. And that's the main thing I remember from Ultimatum. There's some, there's some shit in fucking Ultimatum. It's just insane. Hold up. Is that... Hold up. Hold up. I have to check my <laughs> files. Up. We... Hey, yeah. I, I want to shoot... shoot. Baby, baby. shoop, shoop, ba-doop, shoop, ba-doop, ba-doop, ba-doop. <laughs> here I go, here I go, here I go. I think I know who you're confusing her for, Jake, and I'm going to say no, it's not Yeah, her. I don't think it is either. But What's I'm my weakness, sure. man? <laughs> um, she does no, a lot not. of yeah, yeah, but... British-English period pieces. She looks like, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. Carrie Mulligan. She looks like Carrie yeah. Mulligan, but it's not Carrie yeah. Mulligan. Carrie Fisher? Yes. Doesn't she kind of... I mean, now that I know it's not her, she definitely... She doesn't, but like... Yes, Jake. She, she looks she, a little bit like... Yeah. A Russian version of her. If you've, if you've never seen an Education, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> don't watch it, because if, if you're like Sam and don't like Peter Sarsgaard, but um, Carrie Mulligan is... Can't win them all. phenomenal in an Education, as well as Afro Molina. As I've said many times, I hope... The Magnificent Seven just ends with all the Magnificent Seven shooting Peter Sarsgaard repeatedly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. That I'd be okay with. Like if he's just screaming so loudly yeah. as there's like uh, squibs going off. Remember when he gets annihilated in Black Mass? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're my China girl. Some weirdest David Bowie song. Second single off of Let's Dance. Made even weirder <laughs> by Samson. <laughs> Put on your hands. <laughs> and oddly enough, speaking of Bowie and Carrie Mulligan, she is in Suffragette. City. <laughs> hey, man. That's One of my favorite moments say. of Gilmore Girls, uh, Jess meets or sees his actual father for the first time in like years and years and years and he has an idea it's him but they don't want to say anything and blah 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 and they're sitting at a table in luke's diner after they've closed because jess is working there and you know his uncle is luke and suffrage city's playing and they're both sitting and they don't know what to say and they're just sitting there staring at each other and the wham bam thank you man part comes on and they both mouth that part of the song <laughs> and then jess is like no it's too fucking weird to get up and have a serious conversation cool it's a good scene. I mean, I, I totally would, would have been fine if it ended there, but I liked the little... I like I the like epilogue, the, yeah. especially since they built on it so well in, in Ultimatum. Yeah. But the fact that, like, this motherfucker... Just imagine it. I mean, it would be fucking, it would be kind of abrupt, though. It would. Like, you could tell it's ending right here, yeah. you know? Like, yeah, the credits would yeah. <laughs> come up soon. Yeah. Or they just start rolling over the film. Mm-hmm. I remember... Yeah, I remember... 
uh, vaguely, like when I saw this, could be the Back to the Future like, three cut. <laughs> <laughs> when like the Thin. epilogue happens, I'm like, ah, oh, this is. It, it feels like it was kind of just put in. Hey, I used to work there. Yeah, <laughs> I used to work across the street. In case you New forgot, New York City, the the, the city that never. Sl- oh shit, that yeah. works. Oh god, mm-hmm. uh, 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 the big, yeah. the city for lovers. Yeah. Yes, yeah, city of lights. <laughs> <laughs> flashing, flashing lights, lights. lights, lights. The bam, bam, bam. she don't believe in shooting stars, state. but she believes in shoes and cars. New York City, the Sunshine State. Yeah. Nothing is over. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. There's no turn off. Although yeah, I will, wait, say, I wasn't my war. <laughs> I will, I will say that this this ending. Does lend itself more to uh, the Moby song. It does. I do feel like it would have felt oddly out of place there if, it, if God, <laughs> like if he's just walking through that little park oh, and then you just hear. Wah! Let's she let's, did it. She said let's, the word. Let's all enjoy the my favorite line in Born History. I don't know how close it is to happening. I'm assuming pretty close. I can't remember. Wait, she just she just Dope. told him his real name, and she still refers to him as Born. Yeah, Dope it's is it's the only name he's known for a while. But yeah, he's David Webb. I gotta say, man, like usually we do the thing where we watch the movie, we're like it's not that bad, and we watch it, and it's like that sucked. Yeah, this is like the like I the like this <laughs> yeah. way more this time than than Identity. Yeah, yeah, way more than Identity. The only bit of like because I'm 30 now, I think the only bit of like you get it now. The yeah. only bit of incongruity. Is an ultimatum. It's very clear that it's like fucking winter in New York City. Yeah, yeah. But now this ends with him back in the states, and yet ultimatum. The tagline is Jason Bourne comes home. Yeah, because the film when the film starts out, he's not back in the states. Yeah. And also, like the prologue takes place like right after gets, the car chase in Moscow. He gets like he also comes home. There's that line where you're like, you're home born where like, he's back to where he fucking started. Yeah, like he's the basically whole... at his weapon X. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He comes back to his weapon X and the following. Film. Yeah. Home is more specific than just the U S <laughs> yeah. mm. but home is where he the does heart is. Technically as well. Go it back could be New home. York for him. A house full of love is a home. I but yeah, that was, that New was, um, <laughs> that was, um, that was, yeah, the actor, Brian Cox. Old Bay. But definitely uh, a lot more enjoyable than I remember Born Supremacy. Yeah. yeah Gabriel, man. I was fully engaged the whole time, and it only gets better with the next one. Watch well, just hate the fucking next one. <laughs> no, no I, I legitimately remember being like blown away when I saw it in theaters. Oh, like, fucking, Ultimatum was so good. was, <laughs> at the time, we, you know, looking back anyway, it was my favorite movie of 2007. So. Ooh, I'd have to look back at all the movies of 2007. But I, yeah, I remember my brother and I saw it, and like just... Oh, it's good. So many fucking great shit in that one. So, yeah. You guys got anything to add to that? Nope. No, um, just, I liked no, it so much I, more this time. The shaky cam wasn't as glaring. This no, time it actually around. wasn't. Oddly like, enough, no. Like, I, uh, uh, yeah, it, it didn't seem as... Um, I complain more than Chris. Yeah, it didn't seem as abusive uh, the, in this movie than in Identity. So I think... I think I might go with you and say that uh, I I give this one the gold star mm. so far. Yeah, man, jarheads, <laughs> starring <Vicious> cop. <laughs> yeah. Well, this has been another geek out commentary. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm David Webb. <laughs> I'm Josh. We'll see you next week with the ultimatum. Ooh, it sounds like an ultimatum to me. <laughs> Thanks for listening. This has been another Geek Out production. If you enjoyed what you heard, hey, you know, we've got a new commentary every Monday. We've got a special episode every Friday. Of course, there's the usual catching up show every Wednesday. And you get book club episodes just about every Tuesday these days. Thanks for listening.